thanks to the supporters of channel member Andrew McRobbie. Can we make it into the playoffs this season? No, no, we can't. Mathematically, we cannot. See you Monday, I guess. Hello and welcome to part 50 of Wembley to Wembley. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our final two games of the season. We're at home against Western Supermare and at home against Gosport. Since you were last with me, we have continued our very, very erratic form. As you can see, a uh, couple of wins, a couple of big defeats. And this is how the league table looks with two games remaining. We're seven points outside the playoffs, so we're not quite able to to sneak up into those playoffs. We actually played two teams above us as well, so there's every chance we're going to lose them both and end up finishing in the bottom half. Um, I am, however, going to be experimenting with players and trying to figure out who, if anyone, we're going to keep for next season. Obviously, Tom Best is one that we will be keeping. He's actually ended up having a season almost as good as last year's and he's on the verge of becoming our all-time record goal scorer. Um, Anton Canerva, by the way, the current holder of that title has retired, having been released by us last year. He has retired from professional football, age 23. Never played a game for anyone other than Wembley. Also didn't make it onto the uh, the club favoured personnel. Although I have, me and Tom Best are the only two from this save on the favoured personnel at the moment. So fingers crossed we both start moving up the icons and the legends lists together. If me and Tom Best both become club legends, that means something good has happened here at Wembley. Um, we have already started the clear out. Gary Rowe, who was our club captain, he's already left. He's gone to Ashford. Um, he got in a grumpy that he wasn't playing enough football despite playing 35 games a season. To be fair, he only started 20 of them, but still, he's never managed to get that average rating above a 6.8, even playing in the league below. So he is not the one for us. Um, we are looking at players to potentially bring in, but haven't brought anybody in yet. And we have started thinking in terms of renewing contracts. We'd already got Tom Best renewed. The only other one we've renewed at the moment is Lee, Lee Alderson. Um, so they're definitely here next year. Everyone else, very much up in the air. It could be the biggest transfer window we've done in the entire series coming up on Monday. But this is the team for today's game. As you can see, a little bit rotated. We're having a look at Jack Young in goal. Um, we're then playing a back four of Gibson, Edwards, Young and Leroy. Mingi and Chambers in midfield, Pickering on the left wing, right and best then behind Mooney up front. So all eyes on Taylor Mooney as our striker. Uh, we brought him in and haven't started him in a game yet. So let's give him a couple of starts, see if he's actually any good. Pickering going to get a game playing on the left hand side. He should be better than he is. Um, according to his uh, star ratings, he should be great. As you can see, his season has not been great, but we have been playing him at left back. Maybe he's a left winger um, and Giles has certainly dropped off and I think we're probably going to let him leave in the summer after an incredible first year and the excitement this time last year of signing him permanently. I think he's done. Chris Wright is already on the transfer list because he got in a grumpy about not playing enough matches, um, but we'll give him one last opportunity to shine and we're also looking at Chambers and Mingy in midfield, although to be fair, they're almost certainly both going to be leaving us. Um, Leo Young at the back is someone who I think I'm probably giving a contract to, um, but we're a little bit far apart on on money at the moment. We did try. He wanted something like £180 a week. I don't really want to go above the £100 a week mark for him because I'm trying to keep money aside for our top, top players. And I'm judging everybody's contract against Tom Best. Tom Best has renewed at £130 a week. So if you're going to get paid more than £130 a week, you've got to be better than Tom Best. And if you're not, then you're not getting that kind of money. So Leo Young, it doesn't really matter how good he is, how much I like his spectacles, if he's going to force £180 a week or whatever it is that he wants at the moment, especially when he's only on £90 a week at the moment. And he hasn't exactly been sensational for us. No one, apart from Best, has been good for us this season. So uh, anyone who's getting a contract renewal is uh, is going to be doing it on the same money or less than they're on at the moment. We're not giving out pay rises to players who don't deserve pay rises. That's a lovely save from Jack Young in goal. And that immediately bumps him up to a 7.1. And now we're looking at him and thinking, interesting. Very, very interesting. He's not really had an opportunity. We brought him in as a cheap backup to Bosworth. And uh, he might have done enough with that one save 
to justify a renewal as a cheap backup again for next year if he's willing to sign as a backup. I mean, I don't imagine a scenario where he's going to be our starting keeper next year. Um, but Bosworth may well get a new contract. Um, I'd quite like to bring Smalley back. I think I prefer Smalley, who, of course, got replaced by Bosworth and then got in a grumpy and ended up leaving as a grumpy boy. But he was bigger. I like a bigger goalkeeper. And uh, that was absolutely comical defending. Oh, dear me. <laughs> it's It's been one of those seasons. We've got to keep reminding... I don't want to see it. We've got to keep reminding ourselves... We are a newly promoted team. We've already guaranteed ourselves a top path finish. That's what we had to do before the season started. So we've achieved our season's goals. It's fine. But in a world where players don't really improve because we don't have any training facilities and uh, no one ever improves their current ability, no one ever gets near their potential, it is very clear this squad is never going to get promoted from this league. We are 27 points behind Oxford who look like they're going up as champions. And uh, that means there's going to be some some decent Vanarama National League South. That was a long way to say it, but there's going to be some good National League South play, uh, clubs getting relegated into this league. We have got to, we have got to get a lot better because we don't want three years in any division. So we need to be able to put together a squad this summer to get us promoted next year, even though dynamics are going to be wrecked because we're going to be doing loads and loads of transfers. So we might need a tactical change. Maybe the uh, maybe the control possession system is done. Maybe it's time for us to move on to something a little bit more sensible for this level because we do control possession beautifully. However, we uh, <laughs> we don't score enough goals and uh, we're not actually doing anything with the possession a lot of the time. Um, so we might have a uh, might have a look at potentially getting a new tactic up and running. Maybe even move away from the formation. Um, I do like the 4-3-3. I like diamonds. Um, so we might look at doing something like might even look at a two up top system. We could go 4-2-4. 4-2-4 has always been a fun way to get out of leagues at this kind of level. Right, Pickering is not playing well at all. I think that's pretty much made my mind up about Pickering. I don't know why we've just got defenders on the bench. <laughs> uh, but Gibson can come off and Coffey can come on at left back. Coffey's someone who, again, frustratingly should be better than he is. He can play naturally at fullback on either side, but has never really established himself as the starter at either of them. Um, I've probably played him more at right back than left back, even though he's a left footer. Uh, but he has had Gibson and Pickering ahead of him all season long, and they they are probably both better than him. We are getting absolutely bad today. I mean, remember, we are playing a rotated team, a youth team goalkeeper, and and Western Supermare are trying to get into the playoffs. So I'm not reading too much into the fact that we're being thumped but it's uh it doesn't make it any more fun to witness and it just it just demonstrates what i've been saying the fact that the majority of this squad just aren't good enough well i got briefly rescued by the doorbell ringing but uh i do now have to watch the final couple of minutes of this game <laughs> and oh can we do a goal please i don't i don't like this squad i uh i, I loved them last year I will now publicly admit that there might be a difference between Tier 7 and Tier 8 in Football Manager on FM24. There hasn't been in previous versions of the game, but I will now publicly admit maybe these Road to Glory saves are no longer as simple as just build a good team in Tier 9 and get promoted every year because a good team in Tier 9 was traditionally good enough to be a good team in Tier 6 because there wasn't enough to differentiate the players at the different levels. And... Uh, I think we've found over the course of these first 50 episodes of this series that that is no longer the case. But we are moving in the right direction. As sad as it is to end the season the way we're ending it in such poor form, uh, we have overperformed this season. So it is still fine. Let's go beat Gosport. We could even potentially finish above them if we beat them. We'd have to absolutely smash them. But you never know. Maybe we'll smash them. Well, here we go then, folks. Final game of the season. And this is our team. Bosworth in goal. A back row of Pickering, Edwards, Young and Coffey. Mingi and Alderson in midfield. Butterfield on the left. Going to try him there. Uh, right and best behind Mooney up front. So this is really Mooney's last chance. It's only his second chance, but it's also his last chance. Alderson is here for next year, as is best. Young might be. Um, and Pickering, I really want him to work, but it just doesn't look like it's going to. We're trying him one more time at left back, but he's had an entire season to prove that he's 
good enough to actually play for us and he hasn't really so unless he puts in an absolutely sensational man of the match performance in this one then I suspect we probably let him go and I think he's one who probably is going to oh, it's good. I thought he'd want a lot of money he's only on £60 a week so actually he's probably exactly the kind of player we do want to be building the team around next year it's the guys who are on more money he's only on £30 a week the ones who I thought were expensive are maybe cheaper than like Chris Wright, £140 a week. That is not that's not okay. That can't continue next year. Butterfield on 120 is probably too much money. It's the guys we, we want the cheap guys. I mean, we are paying Aldous and a lot of money. That's on a contract renewal as well. I've changed my tune since renewing his contract. Clearly, he did want a lot more than that. And to be fair, he has been the only player alongside Tom Best who's averaged over a seven this year. So he probably does deserve to be the highest paid player and probably captain next year out of central midfield, unless I decide to uh, to make best captain. At the moment, Bosworth's captain in the team, uh, having with Rowe having left the club. We don't really have a permanent captain because we don't really have any permanent players. <laughs> this team is going to look very different the next time we play a football match. That's for sure. And that will, of course, be the biggest rebuild of the series so far, which will be Monday's video, when if everything goes to plan, we will be releasing almost everybody and then hopefully signing 12 to 15 new players who are really, really good, and then topping up with loans. That's my that's my transfer strategy at the moment. Of course, the whole thing could be ruined by budgets that we set. We haven't been set a budget by the new board yet, so hopefully we'll see that at the end of the episode. If the budget decreases, then we really have got a problem. Um, if they maintain, I think my plan works. In an ideal world, they increase the budget, but that would be absolute insanity considering we are back in our overdraft again. <laughs> Oh, no. Money here is a disaster. Does anyone want to buy a Wembley season ticket? Because, goodness me, we are struggling for cash still. We need that cup run next year, right? Leo Young is injured. That might be the end of him. Uh, Mooney hasn't been good enough. That might be the end of him. We did sign this guy. I don't, don't even know if I even showed you him. We've not tried him out at all, but let's bring him on and see if he's any good. We brought him on on the left in the last game. Um, this is only his second ever game for us, playing as centre forward. If he grabs a couple of goals, then... We'll keep him around in the squad for next year. I suspect he's not going to. And um, this very much feels like a match being played out by two teams who don't really have anything at all to play for. They're one place above us in the league. Neither of us can get into those playoffs. And we're both just seeing the season out here, I think. We'll take off Tom Best. Let him have his, uh, let him have his standing ovation, his round of applause as player of the season. The only player all season long who's actually been any good. Um, we we've not got anyone who can play on that side. Um, we will just I don't know. In fact, we could do a diamond here, or sort of. Yeah, we could do a diamond. We could do like that. Uh, we're not going to fiddle around with it too much because obviously it doesn't matter. But that's a shape we could potentially be moving towards over the case of the summer. Over the case of the summer? Over the course of the summer. Use language words, Kev, you silly goose. Um, we should play him in a more familiar position. Can Alderson... Where have I put Alderson? Can Alderson not play central midfield? Wow. I did not know that about him. Okay, that's something to bear in mind. As a man who's actually under... Oh, we can't move him now. But as a man who's actually got a contract for next year... That is probably something to consider. He, we need to have at least one defensive midfielder because that's all he can do, unless we play him at centre back because he is six foot four. So we could maybe play him at centre back, not that we ever have before. But that, boys and girls, is the end of the season. So fingers crossed, we can see budgets now. Our current budget is that two thousand six hundred pounds a week. If we hit continue a couple of times, fingers crossed, we see our new one there. Here comes the new one. Uh, Chris Wright wants to withdraw his transfer request. Afraid not, son. You're done. Uh, squad planning for next year is basically we have pretty much nobody. These guys are not under contract, so I don't know. There you go. For next year, that's the squad. <laughs> Yikes. Um, and budget. Please be at least 2,600, if not more. Oh, they've reduced it. Oh, they've reduced it. I mean, they should have done, but it still hurts that they have. That does complicate things a little bit for the transfer window. It'll be fine. 
If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.